Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another installment of Scott Selections here for Friday, January 24th. Before we get into today's play of the day, a quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a loss with Porzingis double-double at plus 160 on DraftKings. Um, based on how the lineups turned out, there was still a lot of value on it. Uh, play ended up not being close, but Porzingis was the center. They ended up going small like I thought they would, and yet Porzingis only grabbed five rebounds. Kind of unfortunate, Boban didn't even play. Uh, you had Kleber, who got a decent amount of minutes, and he's also kind of a stretch four. But as a whole, Porzingis just didn't really get close. Both teams scored 120-plus points. Neither team really missed for much of the game. But Porzingis also played 25 minutes, which I found a little bit weird because of the fact that he was playing well, and yet I feel like he would have played at least 30-something minutes. Either or picked up a loss there. That's a bit unfortunate. The line did close at plus 116, and we got into plus 160. So we did get a lot of value, but unfortunately the value did not mean anything uh, as we ended up getting the loss. But for today's play, we've given out some tennis plays in the past. We're going we're to be going back to tennis here on Friday, January 24th. And there's one play in particular that I do find some value on, and it is going to be in a matchup between John Isner and Stan Wawrenka. And we like the first set over 12.5, which is available at minus 112 on FanDuel, and that will be the play of the day. So in other words, we like first set tie break at at minus 112 on FanDuel, and that will be the play of the day. Now, the main reasons why we like this prop is based on the fact that Isner and Warenka so far in their careers have faced each other four times. They've both been around for a long time, but the first set has gone to a tiebreak three of the four times, and the only set that did not ended up closing 7-5. So both players tend to hold serve pretty easily in the first sets in these matchups. Isner has been serving really well, and if you've looked at... His uh, recent uh, stats, he's just been a fantastic... I mean, he's been a, full, a great server his entire career, but over the last two matches in the Australian Open, he's been remarkable. He has not gone broken in uh, seven sets. Uh, in terms of ace count, he's at 78 aces through two rounds, which is absurd. While Ranko's uh, return has been pretty decent, but he struggled with his return against Isner in his career. Isner should be able to pound aces. He's been serving really well. And Warenka, even though his serve has been a little bit more inconsistent, he's still been serving pretty well. He had 19 aces against Seppi while winning 80% of his first serve points. I think Warenka is going to be able to hold serve relatively easily against Isner here. I know Isner ended up winning his last match against Tabilo in straight sets with no tie breaks. But Tabilo is just not a good server, and he's not a great rallier. And Isner's had a pretty easy schedule up to this point. If you've looked at his matchups, he ended up going to four tiebreaks against Thiago Montero. We ended up giving out a play that a winner on that one. But the main reason why I liked the first set over in the first round match against Montero is because of the fact that Montero is pretty solid in his first serves. And I thought that Isner would struggle facing him. And Montero in that match had 18 aces, and he won 85% of his first serve points. Montero actually won more first serve points in terms of percentage than Isner. So the fact that the fact is that Isner just isn't a great returner against, uh, I'd say, mediocre to above-average servers. And Waranka definitely falls into that above-average server category. Uh, Waranka, despite not being the fastest server, he does occasionally have some bombs up the middle, but he mostly does a really good job at at throwing in some kick serves out wide. And I think Warrenka also has the offensive firepower to win some points against Isner and to force him to be uncomfortable. Meanwhile, I think Isner will be able to bomb aces as he normally does. And I think you should see this round, this set end up at 7-6. This game should be close. Uh, this match, I should say, should be very close. And I think that Warrenka will probably win. But I definitely think there is value of minus 112 here on a tiebreak in the first set. I think this line should be around minus 120. I know uh, DraftKings has this line at minus 115. FanDuel has this line at minus 112. So I think there is value here at, mi uh, at minus 112. And the play of the day on Friday, January 24th, will be first set tiebreak between Isner and Waranka at minus 112 on FanDuel. And that is the play of the day. Now, talking about uh, the other leans, I already did a video for winners and winners for the deep three, and I gave out some plays in college basketball and the NBA. So I already gave up my thoughts on those. But I did not give out my leans, and I will be doing that right now. So my main leans here for the betting card uh, with basketball, and I don't really have anything on college basketball. I already gave out a play on Butler and Marquette, so if you've not looked at the winners and winners video, check that one out. But in terms of the leans here, 
Um, what do I like? Um, I'm going to lean to the over 228.5 between the Thunder and the Hawks. This line's gone from 224.5 to 228.5. And, and I think with this four point line move, I think you should see this game reach the 230s. Lean to the over in that one. Other than that, um, I'm going to lean to the Magic minus 1.5. Tatum's not going to be playing for the Celtics. I think they will struggle in his absence offensively. Orlando, even though they haven't been the greatest team, they still have solid big men with Gordon and Vucevic, and I think Boston's front lines will struggle. So lean to uh, Orlando on that one. And I'll also lean to the over 230 between the Grizzlies and the Pistons. Grizzlies love to play an up-tempo style. Detroit loves to play an up-tempo style as well. I think you should see this game get into the 230, so I think this total's a bit too low. Lean to the over in that one. But overall, that's going to be the installment of Scott's selections here for Friday, January 24th. And good luck to all of you and your respective bets today. Bye, everyone.